Hello everyone and thank you for all your support during the past uh, 10 days or so. Uh, I will talk a bit more about uh, the events that occurred over the past week but uh, we're gonna, uh, for those who are interested, I will mention that at the end of the video. So this is a game that happened last week, uh, Fabiano Caruana versus Alireza Firuzja from the Pro Chess League uh, and it's quite the game, they call it the game of the season, uh, the Pro Chess League season, so uh, let's uh, check it out and what's going on. So the time format in the in the Pro Chess League games is 10 minutes uh, per, per uh, well per player uh, and the two seconds uh, move increment so without further ado let's check it out uh, Caruana opens uh, with e4 uh, we have e5 by Firuzja knight f3 knight to c6 and bishop to b5 the Rue Lopez is on the board and now knight to f6 the Berlin defense uh, we have d3 bishop to c5 so uh, all standard stuff bishop captures captures and now knight b to d2 the knight is now coming to c4 uh, from where this knight will help this knight uh, go after the e5 pawn so bishop back to d6 the bishop now already guards it uh, we have knight to c4 now with a double attack here and knight to d7 now defending the d5 pawn twice also getting ready to, to play f6 to, to further guard the pawn also maybe f5 is an idea in some lines uh, so we'll see uh, and here uh, castles uh, bishop to g5 and h4 are known moves in the position but here Fabi played b3 uh, it's a new move in the position so already as of move 8 we have a completely new game now he's preparing bishop uh, to b2 now he's going to add a, tr uh, a third attacker to the e5 pawn so Firuzja just castles uh, with bishop to b2 and now rook to e8 now uh, the rook also defends the pawn you will not have the rook on f8 uh, if you want to maybe execute f5 in the future uh, but uh, that's probably uh, the, the difference in what uh, what uh, Caruana prepared for this game with his bishop to, uh, with his b3 followed by bishop to b2 line so let's see what happens with castles uh, and now b6 preparing to, to play a5 and fing, not fianchetto the bishop but play bishop to a6 uh, we have g3, uh, and now comes a5. Uh, we have a4, not allowing a4 from black, and now bishop to a6. Uh, we have knight to e3, uh, now uh, the knight can come to, to f5. Also, if c5 is played, then the d5 square uh, will be available to the knight. And bishop to c5 by Firuja. Now, uh, Firuja's bishop pair is, well, we could say almost fully operational. Uh, queen to e2, uh, Fabi wants to play king h1 or king g2, move the knight and play f4, and then he needs another defender of the knight, uh, so, so queen e2 is a nice move, uh, also you are, you are connecting your rooks, which is always nice, so f6, strengthening the pawn uh, on e5, now the bishop on b2 isn't all that strong, uh, but now uh, these light square have been somewhat weakened, so knight to h4, also you free the, uh, uh, the this uh, f3 square so you can push the pawn to f4 uh, we have knight to f8 the knight is now coming to e6 from where you will have nice control over d4 and f4 squares and then now king to h1 you don't want to push f4 while your king is still on g1 queen to d7 now connecting rooks also developing the queen and rook a to d1 uh, first rook a to d8 by Firuja. also when the queen moves you want to have nice control over the d file and now uh, knight h back to g2 grabbing more control of the f4 square also if maybe a trade happens here you can even bring the knight here but you are basically preparing f4 uh, and here comes knight to e6 this is what Firuja prepared uh, uh, in anticipation of f4 so now everything is uh, in perfect place there's no really good way to improve the position further so it's time to make a breakthrough uh, we have f4 by Fabi, uh, and now if you capture, capture, then, uh, you know, could be anyone's game, it's a really, really, uh, uh, well, tough look looking position, the bishop uh, sort of comes alive, you can bring the rooks here, maybe rook g1, rook g3, bring the other rook over to g1, uh, with the g file semi-open, it could be a bit problematic for black, so instead we have knight to d4 now, attacking the queen, kind of, uh, trying to, to get rid of the, the dark square bishop as well. Uh, so queen to h5 instead by Fabi. It's uh, Your queen was under attack, so h5 is a, is a nice square. Uh, and queen to f7, offering a trade by Firuja. Uh, so Fabi uh, obliges, queen captures, we have king captures on f7. Also this uh, does improve the position of the king somewhat. Uh, f captures on e5 and uh, you cannot capture because of the rook on f1, so rook captures on e5. And now rook to d2, as the c2 pawn is under attack, you want to defend it. Also in the future you might want to, uh, well, bring the other rook over to f2, maybe to, to create some threats along the f-file, maybe some, uh, 
uh, somehow you, you can break through with the G4, G5, uh, not right away, but maybe in the future. So rook back to E8, you don't appreciate your rook being here on E5 uh, with the bishop x ring it like that. So rook, to, rook E to E8 and here uh, Fabi played uh, G4. It's, it's an interesting move which, uh, which allows Firuja to, to go for a really nice idea. Uh, he wants to he wants to play g5. He wants to free the e5 square, uh, so you can uh, start start push uh, pushing uh, later on. And also, since the king is on f7, nicely uh, in front of the rook, uh, g5 does make sense. But uh, feel free to pause the video here and try to find why g4 doesn't really work in this position. While I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding such a beautiful move with the knight. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's knight captures on c2. And this is why g g4 was a bit premature. Now the problem is, if you capture the knight with the rook, you get bishop captures on d3 now. You grab yet another pawn, you're going to win one of the rooks. So let's say rook c1, captures, captures, and now bishop captures on e3. G, uh, knight captures on e3 and now rook to d3, you're gonna grab another pawn, so after the knight moves you're gra gonna grab this pawn, attack the bishop, put pressure on the bishop, well you're threatening b5, remove the defender of the bishop, then you pick up the bishop, so after the bishop moves you just go rook b4, you're gonna grab another pawn and then it's just, uh, I mean, four pawns on the, on the queen side completely winning. Yeah, if you go knight here to defend it then you lose this pawn, so uh, not gonna work. So knight captures on c2, uh, incredibly strong uh, rook captures doesn't really doesn't really work. So Fab plays knight captures on c2, uh, but now rook captures on d3. So you grab yet another pawn, and now the problem with captures is that after captures again your knight and rook are under attack. But after you defend it, bishop captures on e4, and well the bishop pair now is truly fully operational. You're never gonna move this knight. It's a really tough position to be in. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, it's just much better for black, even though you're down a piece. Uh, but this is what Firuja was going for. So rook f to d1 instead, uh, and now uh, Firuja just continues grabbing pawns. Rook captures on b3. Uh, we have bishop to d4 offering a trade, but uh, Firuja says, no, thank you. I'm just going to play my bishop back to d6. I'm going to keep the bishop pair. And uh, yes, you do have these two nice rooks on the open d file, but with my bishop on d6, you are, your rooks are not very useful. And I'm also having a very nice control of the e5 square, so uh, chances are you will not be able to, to push e5. So now Fabi does it. Uh, uh, you could try to defend the e4 pawn, you could try rook to e1, but again, uh, you will not find all that many moves to play. Uh, the rooks are pretty much stuck like this. Uh, the knight doesn't really have good squares. If you move this knight, bishop b4 will just win material here. So definitely not, not a pleasant position. So after bishop to d6, g5 was played by Fabi. Uh, he wants uh, to get this capturing so e5 can be played. Uh, but now just c5 by Firuja. Uh, getting rid of the bishop, also freeing the b7 square and this diagonal for his light square bishop. So bishop back to a1 and now comes rook captures on e4 grabbing yet another pawn. So here Firuja 7 pawns, Fabi only 3 pawns, so it's, it's not even like uh, Firuja's done a piece. Uh, so g captures on f6, g captures and rook to f2, now putting pressure on the f6 pawn and Firuja doesn't go for uh, some uh, defensive move to, to try and keep an eye on the f6 pawn, but rather an active move, rook to e2. He says, okay, we either trade rooks here or you grab the f6 pawn, but then I have a super active rook on e2. Fabi says, okay, I have to win back some material, rook captures on f6 was played with check, king e7, and now rook to e1, now uh, forcing a, a rook trade because you don't want to leave this rook here, uh, especially with the bishop coming to b7, it would just be game over. So rook captures on e1, knight g captures on e1, and bishop to b7 check now. The bishop pair is becoming more and more powerful, uh, almost um, a bishop pair from hell, we, we could say. So king to g1 and now rook to h3 going after the h2 pawn. So rook to f2 you have to defend it but now bishop to c6. You cannot keep on defending everything. There's nothing you can do uh, to help out with the defense of the a4 pawn. So rook e2 check was played king d7 and knight to e3. Fabi trying to activate his pieces as, 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 as well somehow. Uh, but it's not that simple. Bishop captures on a4 and now Firuja has three connected pass pawns and also one, uh, one c pawn as a spare. So knight g4, 
uh, you want to get your knights as as close as possible to the black king, but, uh, well, bishop to d1. Now, again, forcing more trades, so you do have to go for this check, knight f6 check, king c6, and rook to d2. Now, putting uh, pressure on the bishop here, but bishop to b3. Uh, we have knight to d3, uh, but now just c4. Uh, we have knight to e5 with check, uh, again, trying to trying to... Uh, get rid of one of the bishops because the bishop pair is too strong, but king b7. Firuja says, nope, I'm still keeping my bishop pair. Uh, and king g2, uh, getting the king to, uh, to, to a safer square, also pushing the rook back, rook to h6, and then now rook f2, guarding the knight on f6. But now Firuja's, pl Firuja's plan is fairly simple, he just needs to start pushing the pawns, if those pawns, uh, well, get at least uh, ha halfway through, it's game over. So b5. Uh, we have knight to e4, now putting pressure on the bishop this way, and now b4. Uh, with c3, if c3 is played, then this bishop is completely locked out of the game. So first bishop to d4 by Fabi, but now c3. Uh, so c2, c1 is coming, bishop to e3 by Fabi guarding the c1 square, but now uh, rook to e6, uh, putting, uh, well, a double attack against the knight here, uh, and finally knight captures on d6. So the bishop pair is now no longer existent, but uh, it is no longer even, uh, even important. So rook captures on d6, we have king to g3, and now uh, bishop to d5, freeing b3 square for the pawn to be pushed, knight to d3, and now b3. So these pawns are extremely dangerous and extremely fast. Uh, knight c5 check, and then now comes king to c6. The bishop guards the b3 pawn, so it's not a problem. Rook to f8, Fabi wants to bring the rook behind the pass pawn to guard b1 this way. So b2. Uh, we have rook to b8, but now uh, rook to g6 with check. Uh, we have king to f4, and now before uh, going for this maneuver here to keep an eye on the b1 square, first uh, rook to g8, going after Fabi's rook. Uh, rook to b7, the knight nicely guards the rook, and the bishop nicely guards the knight, so everything is nicely guarded, but uh, there's very little Fabi can do here. Rook f8, check. King to g5, and now rook to f1. Finally, the rook uh, reaches uh, to help out uh, the defense of the uh, with the defense of the b1 square. So, rook to a7 by Fabi, uh, giving Firuja one more move, and here Firuja just played uh, b1 queen. And it was in this position on move 58 that Fabiano Caruana resigned the game and uh, a beautiful, beautiful victory by Alireza Firuja against the number two player in the world. Uh, also one of the candidates of the uh, 2020 candidates tournament and also the former uh, World Chess Championship challenger. So not not a bad game against someone like that by the 16 year old Firuja. Uh, but it's a, it's a, such, a, such a dominating position. Even if you bring a knight into the game, it's still a winning position for black. So it's not, that doesn't really matter. There are no tactics uh, after the queen is brought into the game. Rook a6 check, king b5. There, there are no more tricks. So uh, it's just a, just a really a one way game that uh, Firuja completely dominated. So it always, uh, it always, uh, uh, I mean, uh, how it, it, it always um, not impresses me, but it always makes me very happy when I see the Berlin defense uh, being played in such a way, like uh, like when Kramnik played it against uh, Levon Aronian in in the candidates uh, uh, in, in the candidates tournament two years ago. Uh, with that, with that uh, brilliancy, we, we covered it. It was the, the Berlin Immortal game. Uh, really, just you know, something happens, and even though the Berlin is a very positional, slow opening, you know, uh, you know, a anything can happen. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Alexander Koitich, uh, Julian Yusuf Zade, Taras Karpiak, Dame Potvarec, and uh, Nagarjuna uh, Ponugoti for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the Paul Morphy saga and whatever else happens in the chess world. And now that's it for the game. For those of you who are interested, I will now shed some light on what happened in the, uh, well, in the previous week that I was absent. Uh, some, sometimes during uh, last Sunday, like that's some 10, 10 days ago, uh, my girlfriend's mother had a stroke. Well, not a stroke. It was basically a, an aneurysm rupture, and it was a it, it was a very severe case, and uh, it happened in Germany in Bad Pyrmont. We were in Croatia, and we immediately flew over there. Uh, they had to take her over to the to the bigger, better hospital in Göttingen, in, also in Germany, uh, but. Uh, after a few days, there, there was nothing they could do, and uh, well, in in the end, she she passed away. It was too too severe a case, and it, uh, she she couldn't recover. 
So uh, although although you don't know her uh, through this channel, you pretty much know uh, all of her children, all of her grandchildren. You know my uh, my significant other Yelena. You know Yuzarov. Yuzarov also runs a chess channel. Uh, you know Goran uh, Kronaldinho and Lee Chess. You've you've played against him on my on my streams. You know her grandsons. You know. Uh, Philip and Ivan, uh, we've checked out uh, Philip's game against Kasparov, we checked out uh, Philip's uh, first victory against the Grandmaster some maybe maybe two weeks ago. Uh, so basically, yeah, it, it, it happened and it's, uh, it's a terrible tragedy and there's, uh, well, th there's nothing that, that can be done here and it's just, it's just the way it is. So uh, there's, uh, it's, well, it's, it's, it just sucks. Uh, but uh, what I wanted to tell you that uh, if you if you want, uh, I will put a link uh, in the description below uh, to one of Yozarov's videos. Uh, it's a, it's a brilliant uh, queen sacrifice game between uh, uh, Vasily Ivanchuk and uh, Sergei Karyakin. Uh, his father uh, Slavko, uh, her husband, suggested that game. So if you're interested, you, you can check it out and also maybe maybe express your condolences. It's not much, but uh, in situations like these, only only time can heal and uh, well may maybe just by reading some of your comments maybe it will uh, at least uh, take some part of the day uh, you know make it go faster and uh, I don't know ju just thought maybe it would be a nice gesture uh, I don't often ask anything of you guys so if, if you can do that that'd be that'd be awesome if if not I, I really uh, I still appreciate all of your support so yeah it will be the first link you've seen in the description below so uh, th there you have it that's that's what happened and uh, well uh, th that's the reason for my absence for the for the past uh, 10 days uh, but yeah once again uh, i would like to thank you all for watching uh, and uh, yeah uh, as usual you can check two of my previous videos here uh, and i i will see you soon like i've already mentioned so thank you all uh, and well see you soon